Hello everyone and welcome to the Klingberg Motorsport YouTube channel. If you haven't been to this channel before, my name is Jared and this is my uh, abandoned and forgotten VN Commodore that I picked up for $600. Uh, heck, it would be a couple months ago now. Uh, pretty much I bought it and someone had started tubbing it and they uh, had cut everything out of the back here. So I have finished tubbing it. Uh, I'll chuck a link uh, up the top here. Uh, so yeah, anyway, we've finished tubbing it pretty well. We're waiting on a few little bits and pieces, but uh, so this video series from here on will be me putting this fine RB30 uh, into this here VN Commodore. Maybe it'll become the, uh, I don't know, an interceptor, you know, RB30 turbo, see how we go. But yeah, pretty much. I'm going to put this in there and I haven't done this before. So I've done a little bit of research and I've talked to a few people and I mean, they're pretty well bolt in, uh, but yeah, I've heard they're easy. So I've just thought I'm going to give it a crack and see how easy it actually is to do it. So I've got myself a VLK frame. So thanks, uh, thanks to Nick for sorting that out because I couldn't find one and I've given it a coat of paint, quick clean up and a coat of paint there. And yeah, so now I'm gonna start stripping this back down. So obviously rip that out. I had that in there for a bit of a laugh last video. Um, but yeah, drop the K-frame back out and we'll get that K-frame in and start bolting this sucker in. So I'm going to do this on a budget, like as cheap as possible. Make everything myself within reason. Uh, make my own turbo manifold. So this episode I'm going to be yeah, bolting this in and seeing how easy it is apparently. Uh, and then next episode, we'll be making a turbo manifold, I reckon. Uh, I've got a heap of parts on the way, so hopefully everything actually turns up in time like it's supposed to. But let's see how we go. RB30 is bolted, well, loosely bolted. I didn't have the right bolts, need to buy some bolts. Uh, but it's on the cross member. Everything's cleaned up, ready to go back in. Gave everything a bit of a clean up. I didn't really, and paint, I didn't really uh, go into too much detail with it, but I think you know how that works. 
Yeah, so now we're going to try and drop this uh, K-frame and everything back in with an RB30 on it. So let's see if this works. I don't know how hopeful I am of everything just flowing, but... And we're clearing everything there. We're clearing everything there, sort of. Enough. That just needs to be lined up. I don't know, everything looks pretty good. I uh, I just want to make it known that I'm I'm doing it this time uh, dropping it on the K-frame because I wanted to see how the motor bolted to the K-frame. Everything seemed good, so I thought I might as well put it in the car and see how we go. This isn't the last time this engine's staying in the car. I'm going to pull it out when I probably want to do head starts and everything on it uh, to give it a quick build, uh, so to speak. But yeah, I just wanted to bang her in there and see what it looks like, pretty much. I can already see I need to just roll this back a smidge because that bolt there, that stud, ain't going to line up with that hole as it's going, but everything else is looking alright so far. Alright, 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 alright. Uh, that plug is already broken, but we'll tuck that out the way. Bit of wiring out the way. So far, so good. I think we're all good here. Not quite in, but we're getting there. Bit by bit. Alrighty, all done. RB30 conversion, finished. Ready to start her up and drive her out the shed. Nah, I think we've got a bit more work to do, yeah, but it is down sitting uh, on the K-frame. The bolts obviously lined up, it's a Commodore. Gearbox cross member lined up, some bolts. Uh, I do need to, like I just did it lying under the car with the jack on the trans while it was still on the hoist a little bit. Uh, so I do need to get under the car and just line up everything up properly and just make sure it all fits. Uh, I am seeing another issue here though, already. Uh, the bonnet line, I was planning on, if I didn't uh, need to do a forward facing plenum, I was just going to like route some cooler piping like that. But I reckon she's gonna be a tight squeeze through there. So we might have to rethink that one. Uh, at least I reckon we can look into not running a header tank on this at least, because I was going to chuck uh, that standard radiator back in it, but obviously the inland and outlet uh, opposite to where they need to be, but just around here I've got this old stanky radiator out of the Corolla. The inlet, uh, an outlet, uh, almost right, 50% of them are right. Um, but I just want to see if it's going to fit. So this is just the S13 SR20 radiator. And is it going to fit? Oh, yes. Ooh, it's going to fit a little too well. Wowzers. <laughs> uh, so yeah, obviously the inlet and outlet not quite right here, but, so we need to go from there to here. So I'm going to source a, uh, like an R32 one, I reckon. And heck, that is probably going to fit. My, like obviously I'm going to hopefully just drill some holes down the bottom so we can drop it down that extra 25 mil or so. But somehow, that looks like it's going to fit a little too well. 
made for it almost. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be able to get rid of a header tank on this because uh, it's not here anymore, but the 3.8 obviously sat a little bit higher, so I had a bleed point and stuff. Uh, so this had to be the highest point, whereas this, the radiator cap, is definitely the highest point uh, in the coolant system. So, like, obviously this is going to drop a bit, but it's still going to be higher than that outlet there, and that's probably the highest point on the motor. Uh, I presume that's a bleed screw just there, so... Yeah, I reckon we'll get away with no header tank on this one. Well, look, now it's pretty much done with the radiator, in it? Too good. It's, uh... Yeah, it looks like it's meant to be. Kind of one of the reasons why I got a uh, VL motor, not a R31 motor. Half the reason, rocket cover's right, you know? But, yeah, definitely meant to be. Looks good in there. But let me tell you, that was definitely the easiest... Uh, Engine conversion, uh, mounting I've ever done, definitely. <laughs> Most definitely bolts in, no problems whatsoever, so far. Uh, but next up, time to get this front end off. So I'm going to get the bumper off, maybe take the headlights out so I can get that aircon condenser out, I'll relocate that trans cooler and start getting an intercooler mounted in there, I reckon. So. Intercooler should look good sitting behind there, I reckon. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, this is going to be pretty straightforward for piping and stuff, I reckon. It's not, I mean, I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to unbox a turbo in a minute. Uh, there's not a whole lot of room over here, to be honest. I was expecting a little more room. And one downside to me getting too big a turbo is hopefully it fits uh, in there. But I reckon we'll be all right. Um, I could do like the pro mod style, uh, where I mount the, um, turbo up here, but, uh, distributor is going to be a problem there. So I want to keep heat away from the distributor. So I'm probably going to try and mount the turbo back as far as possible. Um, uh, so the back of the turbo is sort of here and then dump pipe will straight down there. Another reason why I decided RB over JZ or anything, uh, I've seen JZs in Commodores. And there is not much room to fit a dump pipe in that area. Uh, so yeah, another reason why I went with the RB. And I wanted to uh, feel the power of the Mighty 3 liter. So, but yeah, we should be able to poke some holes through here. Uh, I might even make up a nice, neat little uh, box for the turbo intake. Oh, no, actually, changed my mind already on that one. We're obviously just going to have a straight pipe out of the turbo to get that VL dose. <laughs> Don't mind me though, I'm just uh, thinking out loud here. All right, definitely, oh heck, I could almost make, I was gonna run thermos, but I could almost make up a uh, nice little shroud and run the stock clutch fan on that, I reckon. Don't know, leave that one with me. But yeah, for now, bumper off. Intercooler in, start mounting some more stuff on this.
So I've got my marketplace intercooler back in there. I had a uh, 450 by 300 intercooler, um, but not quite big enough. So this is just a El Cheapo uh, I picked up off a of marketplace, not a Plasma Man cooler. Uh, this, like realistically, I'm gonna put a, a uh, probably a 100 mil core in here, the same size, like the same measurements as this. This is a, a 600 by 300 um, by, I don't know, it'd be like 70 or 75. So like maybe, yeah, probably 75 mil thick. I haven't measured it, but um, yeah. So I wanna put the same size core in it, just 100 mil thick instead of 75. Uh, so I'm just trying to work out what I'm gonna make mounts wise. Uh, the bottom's going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to make it off of... Uh, I'll work out the top ones first, but I'm going to make it off of... Uh, make it off the front chassis rail sort of thing there. Somewhere. Uh, as for the radiator, same deal. Um, I'll just move this cooler out of the way. Uh, same deal here, so I'm just going to So once again, it is not The radiator that's going in here, but it has the same mounting points. Uh, it is a s13 radiator uh, So I'm just gonna mark that there Mark that there Just so I know roughly where it's going uh, Yeah, it is the s13 sr20 radiator but I'm putting a R32, uh, like RV20 radiator in it basically. So same radiator, just different, uh, different inlet and outlet. Um, so yeah, I reckon by the time I drill these holes, drop the radiator down like that distance there, that will get me that distance there back. Uh, so I reckon we'll be on it now there because pretty much my goal today is to work out top mounts for these. Uh, and cooler mounts, so I've got all that stuff mounted. Uh, and then we move on to the next bits. Like I said, next week will be turbo manifold, uh, but I also want to make a start on this uh, forward-facing plenum. I just want to do a cut and shut on that, uh, so we'll go through that a little bit when I do it. Uh, I don't currently have a uh, ACDC TIG, so my mate Dan's going to TIG that one up for me probably, So, but I'll make it all prep it all, get it all ready to go, and then I'll just fang down there one day and get him to suss her out for me. So I uh, pretty much want the throttle body uh, to finish up about here somewhere. I'm not running that battery. I don't know if I mentioned that. I'm going to put a battery in the boot on this one. So this battery location, not needed. But what I want, uh, like a few people I've seen where you can do the like delete sort of thing, so it looks the same as that side. But what I actually want to leave this area for is obviously cooler piping, uh, but I also want to put a catch can in it. So I want to put a three litre catch can in it probably at least. So similar sort of thing to the Corolla. Um, so I'll put some better breathers and everything on this and actually run a good catch can because yeah, it will, uh, it will need it probably. All right, change my radiator because uh, I have a whole pile of old radiators out of the Corolla. Um, so this car is getting built uh, with 90% hand-me-down parts, hopefully. So I marked the other uh, radiator, as you just seen, and I thought, you know what? Seeing as I'm not actually running that radiator, I better just double check that the other ones are the same. And yeah, definitely different. So this one, even though it's a direct replacement, holes are in a slightly different spot. It's probably 20 mil narrower than the, uh, the silver one that was in there before. So I've decided I'm going to mount this one, um, even though, once again, it's still not the same as the one that I'm getting, uh, which will have both holes on this side, but 90% confident uh, the new one will be the same as this. So anyway, I'm gonna drill these holes and mount this radiator.
So I mounted it into the stock uh, VN lower mounts, like VN radiator lower mounts, which are normally in those holes out there. So just re-drilled inside uh, to suit this one. But I am going to run it raised. So with that extra five mil gap. So I'm just gonna get some five mil or 10 mil probably thick rubber and stick in there so it's tight. Uh, just so I don't have uh, header tank issues here. So this is obviously the radiator cap, which needs to be the highest point. And if you can see back there, come on, phone. Yes, back there. That is the, uh, the bleed nipple. So it's just, just higher than that. So like that's the water neck where it comes out the block or the head, sorry. And uh, yeah, so that's just higher. So that 10 mil that I've raised it up here, uh, we'll clear that. Um, so next up is top mounts. I've chucked the bonnet prop thingy back in uh, so I can suss out these top mounts. Now this thing, this radiator is very solid in there. Um, and I want to run this standard uh, shroudy thing. So my thoughts here are, So that will roughly sit like that. So this bit of cardboard that I've cut out to the shape of uh, what will be a top radiator mount. I'm actually going to only run one, I reckon. So you can kind of see that this one like will fit there pretty good. Uh, but this one here, there's no real room for it to go. And I'm pretty confident that we can get away with there with only just having one in it. Um, so, I'll just remove this again. Uh, you can see that one there, like there's plenty of room under the rod there and stuff. Obviously it needs to go down a couple mil, but there will be plenty of room under that rod. Whereas over here, there will not be by the time, uh, like realistically wherever you could mount this one would only be to here, but then I don't want that because that's too high. So over here, but then it's uh, it doesn't leave you much room to get between these two. Uh, so, yeah, or I could make a piece that goes all the way across here, uh, but then obviously I'm going to have to have it all cut out around that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think this is what I'm going to go with. Option one is this for me, or option two is have that whole piece go across. So I'm going to decide shortly on that one. I'll cut that out in a minute, but for now I'm going to get that sucker in there. Uh, work on a top mount, get a somewhat uh, bolted in, and then, like I said, I'm gonna lift it up on the hoist and get these bottom mounts in there somewhere. Yeah, probably just some nut certs in these. I'm not gonna go overboard on them, I don't think. This rad support, I am going to uh, clean it up, wire wheel it, and prime it and paint it because. The engine bay actually looks pretty good. I still need to roll this out and pressure wash this because it's grimy as. Um, yeah, the radiator support is probably the worst part of the engine bay and I reckon that's pretty easy to clean up. So I'm going to do that while the engine radiator and everything is out and bumpers off, etc. So. So that bracket fits onto there, no problems now. That is, in fact, the correct radiator now in the car. So that one's going to stay. Uh, I went through a few more of the pile to find something, but we're on a winner here. So yeah, that bracket I need to make. And this is my uh, idea so far on this top bracket. So I'm gonna Make a start on that one, I reckon. Make that bracket, basically, and see if it's gonna work. I reckon we're in a winner, so yeah. Uh... All right, let's make this. All right, I know what you're thinking. That's not the piece of cardboard that you had marked out. You're right, I changed my mind. Uh, I had a bit of three mil 
mild steel uh, sheet here that I was going to use and it was 20 mil too narrow, which was a pain and I didn't want to weld it together. So changed my mind. I found a bit of flat bar I had lying around and I made this up. Just a neat little bar. I mean, this is the first time I've actually sat on here. Uh, yeah, it fits pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to nut set some uh, holes into here and there. And I also finished off that top bracket. I just need to drill some holes, put some nut sets in there. And then those top mounts will be done. Was a good start. That one's getting relocated to the uh, hole saw arbor set when I resharpen it. All right, holes drilled. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit dodgy here. I want to have this nut set here sit flush and I can't find my little dimple die. I've got a little dimple die that normally does this. So I'm going to use this bolt and uh, pull it through with this nut underneath. Washes on the bottom like that. Something like that. Let's see if it works. All right, I reckon we're in a winner. I do need to straighten it out a little bit, but that's easy enough. That is not the correct way to do it, but they are flush. Don't worry about the missing paint. We are going to find some fresh paint for that. Ah, uh, but yeah, so now I can pop that mount back on. Chuck some bolts in there and we'll be, uh, we'll be on a winner there. And there we go. Once again, if you're playing at home, it's probably not the best way to do it, but She's sitting nice and flush now, bolted down, good to go. Next up, just bolting this sweet mount on. Uh, from here, I'm going to level a couple things. My mate Trav watched my video the other day when I was doing the opinion angles and decided to get me a birthday present for the other week and yeah, got me this neat little digital angle gauge and it is Awesome. I'm going to set this about around that uh, 0.15 degrees because most things on this car kind of feel like they're about 0.15 degrees. I mean, you can't, it's not really, it's difficult to do it on there, but yeah, I don't know. Depends how much you lean on it and so that's pretty much what I'm going to set that to. Uh, the rest of the car, not level, but this intercooler needs to be pretty level. Probably nothing that annoys me more is when you see a car and you can see the intercooler is mounted on a little bit of an angle or something like that. So I'm going to make sure I get this nice and square. Uh, so we're going to bolt her on and see how we go.
turned out way too good. Don't mind the little bend in that. I'll get that out when I uh, back those bolts off and loosen it off. But yeah, come up pretty good actually. These were just literally some, uh, like a bit of off cut that I had, which is why it's uh, countersunk because they were like an already countersunk piece of steel. But yeah, it actually worked out quite good. I didn't flush mount the uh, nut certs there like I did up the top, but because I wasn't really fussed about it being flush in that position. Decent though, decent, decent, decent. Looks uh, quite good. So I just need to trim this little um, seal air dam thing uh, so that it actually fits on there properly, but that actually looks pretty good also. Now I'm just going to fix that little bow in it, uh, but then chuck her up on the hoist and attack the uh, bottom mount there. I might chuck the headlights in while I'm at it. Uh, but yeah, I wanna maybe roll this out the shed and give it a pressure wash. I didn't pressure wash anything before I put the engine in. Like I said before, I'm taking the engine back out anyway, but yeah, for now, she needs a bit of a clean. Up on the hoist, this is my first time looking under this uh, with the RB in it, like cross member and everything in, uh, to assess if and uh, what else needs to happen under here. So that there is the stock RB30 automatic uh, transmission cross member bolted in. I've only got one bolt in at the moment, but the other bolt holes uh, do in fact line up. Uh, I haven't really mentioned this either, I don't think, but I'm kind of toying with the idea of converting it to manual. What do you reckon, automatic? Obviously I know the power limit of automatics and it's going to cost me some money uh, in the future, very near future possibly, to do something with it, uh, whereas a manual gearbox Clutch, obviously, yeah, much of a muchness probably, but do we want an auto or manual uh, RB30VN? Don't know. I'm 50-50. Anyway, everything else doesn't look too bad, to be honest. Obviously, the sump is all bashed in. I need to get a new one or knock that out or something, but yeah, I've got to rip that off sooner or later and... Assess the situation in there anyway, but everything else actually looks pretty good to be honest. I haven't got the tail shaft in, but I'm pretty confident she's going to be all good. Yeah. RB30 and VN. Works too good. I'm just getting sidetracked again, as I always do. So I need to fit this stock, uh, like air dam thingy majiggy under here. So I want to fit that. Swap hands. I want to fit that up there where it should go uh, so everything looks as standard as possible. Brother, ooh. But what my thoughts are here is, so you can see the little bit of a step up to get uh, around that intercooler. I reckon like those mounts would have to go up and in. I could trim that just a little bit to run them straight. Might trim it. I've already convinced myself to trim it, I think. Wouldn't need much. I'll just put a little bit of flat bar from there straight across to there and then just trim around it, I think. Yep, I think I've convinced myself. My other idea was have a bit of flat bar that comes up and then goes up like this and down and around. And then I can just bolt this in its standard form. Uh, back up on there. I'm probably gonna use some of these holes that this is mounted on the standard. I'm gonna, once again, I'll just nut it down here. Pop a couple nut sets in them holes. And yeah, I might just, uh, might just assess that a little bit, but. I know I said I was going to do the bottom uh, intercooler mounts, but I got sidetracked again. I wanted to just double check that we can get a tail shaft in this again. And boom, tail shaft is in. So front half VL Commodore, rear half VN Commodore. 
mint. Other thing I really wanted to double check was uh, sway bar fitment. So VN sway bar, also good to go. It's not uh, it's not fully bolted in, but she's pretty much in there. I just wanted to double check that the K frame wasn't a different shape here, and that the sump clearance was all good. And she is mint. So yeah, that will wait till next week. Uh, next week's video, I'll be making a turbo manifold from scratch for this turbo here that is way too big way too big and you know that that is eBay's finest $200 turbo it's gonna be mint uh, so I'm gonna finish this video here though so thanks everybody for watching. If you want to start to date and see some more RB30 VN content, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, chuck a comment below and let me know uh, if you like this video, if you're watching it to learn how to do it, uh, or if you just want to follow the journey. So, yep, lots of work to do. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you next week.